if you want to put in uh, use Microsoft Word track changes functions then um, it's uh, easy and convenient uh, the first thing is you you might not have uh, this is the my track changes toolbar that might not be showing for you so you'll want to do view toolbars and it's called reviewing so reviewing hot now I've unchecked it and it's hiding view toolbars reviewing here it is and I have some cha uh, some options here uh, which I'll go over in a moment uh, currently the track changes is turned off so I'm going to go over to this button and turn track changes on you can see it now has a little box around it um, and so any changes that I make in the document are going to be recorded if I add new text here's a new sentence you can see that it, uh, it's it's in a different color and underlined. I think that might be red. I, I apologize. I'm red green colorblind, so I'm not sure if that's red or green. Uh, if I delete something, let's let's say I don't like uh, this word, I just delete it. And in this case, it is displaying using uh, bubbles. These are called. Um, uh, you can change the options of how it displays. If I go to the options, um, I uncheck balloons, and instead it shows that this has been deleted by doing a strike through on it. And I'm not sure if these are the same colors or different colors. Um, another thing in the options is uh, you can you can change. Um, you know how it is displaying only. You can uh, choose the color or whatever style. I think that this is the the automatic version is with a color and also the underline. Um, and then uh, you can choose the color that you want the track changes to be in, or it will automatically do it by author. For example, a document that more than one person will be applying track changes to, it would do, for example, red for what I the changes I make, and then someone else makes different changes. They might be blue, uh, something like that. Um, so I'm going to turn balloons back on. I personally prefer that, but uh, that's a personal preference. Um, and let's say I want to make a comment here to the author of this document. I go up here and I click the comment button. I say, you don't know what you are talking about here. Um, I, I try not to make comments that are that rude most of the time, uh, even if that's what I'm, even if that's what I might be thinking. I, I rarely actually think that, but there you have it. Um, so let's say uh, you get a document that has changes. Um, you can click in the changes. Well, here's one thing you can do. Starting at the top of the document, this button just takes me to the next change. So I can see exactly what it is and see how they, that this from the bubble, the dashed line, what had been the little dashed line showing it. Now it shows exactly, connects it, which it's not hard to tell on here, but if I had done uh, multiple changes, um, then you know it might be a little hard. You might say, "Well, which one came from where?" So I click that one. I see, oh, that came from there, and this one came from there. Um, and then I can click this button. I can accept that change, and now it's just the history of that change is gone. Uh, I'm going to edit, undo that. So it's back, um, or I can reject that change, in which case it reverts to what it used to be like, and the history of change is gone again. Um, do that. So, um, and you can do that. The alternative is you can go over to the bubble and right-click on it, and you can accept or delete. Uh, in place. I, I find that a little faster than going up to these buttons, but again, it's a, it's a preference. You can do something rash, such as, if you click this bottom arrow, accept all the changes in the document, and then, boom, there they are. I will undo that. You can see over here, anytime there's any change in a line, there'll be a, uh, a, a line over in the margin showing 
know, this line has a change. And uh, often, you know, you might think, oh, you don't need it because here's this color and here's the bubble. But for example, if I just did something small like put in a comma right here, you might not notice if you're scanning it, you might not notice that something small like a comma was inserted. But this informs you there is a change in here to pay attention to. The comments, um, you can right click, delete the comment. If you want to change the comment, you just click in it and type in your change. Um, you can make a change actually in here. You can you can accept, let's say, um, well, and here, if I, I here, if I continue to delete here, you notice that because I'm deleting from the same location, as I am hitting the delete button over here where the cursor is, what I'm deleting is getting added to this bubble because it's all a continuous change. Uh, and let's say I deleted both of those words and I realized, oh no, I wanted to delete only one of those words, I can highlight just part of it and click reject that change and uh, oh, there's a extra space there and so it puts that portion of it back in but um, but the other portion is not so you can you can really you know fiddle very closely uh, do detail work like that and another option that you have um, well uh, another option is to use what's called the reviewing pane, which opens up here at the bottom, um, and it shows, it lists all of the changes and comments in order. Um, here was a deletion, here was a deletion, scroll down, here was an insertion, there was a comma that got inserted, and here's a comment, um, and that. I, I f don't find this helpful myself, uh, although if there's a very long comment, or a very long uh, delete, and then you can close the reviewing pane here. If there's a very long uh, deletion, then, for example, let's say I delete, you know, this much, it's more than will fit in the bubble. It just barely fit on the page, so let's delete some more. Um, it moved the comment up, it kept the comment, the comment is actually associated with a position in the deleted text, but the, um, so the comment marker is at the same place where the deletion marker is, that's why it looks like that, so that can be a little confusing, because then the comment seems as though it might be on these, on the text that remains, but really it's referring to the text that's in here. And then if I un, if I uh, refused this deletion, if I uh, rejected the deletion to have the text return to the document, then the comment would, would appear in the correct place. But as you'll see down at the bottom, it was too much text, either as a comment or a deletion was too much to fit, and it shows you with these the ellipses here, that means this continues, and then if you click that, it opens the reviewing pane. And this is a time when you need the reviewing pane to be able to see what was the whole thing here. Um, and, but again, I'm going to close the reviewing pane. Um, you know, it's, un, it's not very common to be deleting that much at a time, but if you have a page with lots of, uh, lots of deletions or changes here and there, and another one, and another one, and another comment, and another comment, they fill up this margin on the right-hand side, and so then the final um, deletion or comment uh, that just kind of fits in at the bottom, even though it's itself not terribly long, might not fit on the page, and then you get that ellipsis and you won't need the, uh, the reviewing pane. You can, here let's um, do some deletions and some insertions, here's some new text. Um, you can, this is what it's looking like with the, all the track changes going on, you can change what you're looking at, you know, there might be a lot of changes here and there, and it's very confusing, oh my, um, and it's sort of, might be getting to be hard to read, and if you want to have a chance to see what it looks like without all the jumble going on, you can change what you see, just view final, here's what it looks like, 
as if all of the changes had been accepted and the comments are hidden. Um, and Or you can go back, here's what it looks like in the original with no none of the changes uh, done. You can go back and forth to compare like that. Um, you can also have it show original showing markup. So then in that case, the deletions are shown in place with the strike through and the insertions are in the bubbles. Uh, in my experience, <clears throat> usually the display is set to final showing markup, but it's up to you. One thing that is important, if you have put in some track changes or working on done with track changes, save it with the showing markup going on because then people will know that there's markup. If you save it in, say, final mode, um, I believe that it saves with this display as the default. So then when someone else receives your document through email or however, and they open it up, they won't see the track changes. They may not realize that there are track changes occurring in this document uh, unless they think to change it there to, to see. And I think that should be enough to get you going. Uh, let me know if not.